Hey guys, and welcome back to Through the Lens. Today we're going to be talking about the Instamatic line of cameras, specifically the Kodak Instamatic 104 and the Kodak Instamatic M18. Let's get into it. Let's start with the Kodak Instamatic 104. This was produced from 1965 to 1968 and took 126 film, which was a little plastic cartridge that would just drop into the back of your camera. You would close it, advance it, and you are ready to take pictures. That's all you do. Now, this camera was extremely simple to use because this was aimed more at the family photographer. This was definitely not meant for the professional photographer. It had a set aperture and set focal distance. The set aperture of f11 and everything from feet, three feet out to infinity was in focus. It did have two separate shutter speeds depending on if the flash cube was in or not. Without the flash cube, it was set at 1 90th of a second, and with the flash cube attached, it was set to 1 40th of a second. Now this was the first Instamatic camera to use the flash cube, but it wasn't the first Instamatic camera to be released. The Instamatic 100 was the first, and that used single-use flash bulbs. Now after that, they came out with the flash cube, which had four different flash bulbs in it. Every time you would take a picture with this, the bulb that was pointing in front of the camera would go off and as you let go the cube would turn to the next available bulb. Now whenever you would take your next picture the next uh, bulb would go off until all four were taken where you would press this little black button whoop, and the bulb could just fall right off into the trash can. Almost every family in the 1960s had a Kodak Instamatic. These were extremely popular cameras Kodak actually sold these cameras for less than it cost to produce them because they would make their money with film sales later on. Now, I guarantee you if you go digging through some of your old family photos, you will see some pictures taken from a Kodak Instamatic. You can always tell which pictures were taken from an Instamatic. By looking at the picture, you can see that it is surrounded by a white border and on the bottom it has the month and the year that the photo was taken or processed, most likely printed on the bottom. I actually have some family photos that were taken on a Kodak Instamatic. They were taken by my grandma of the high school that I currently go to, and they were taken when Richard Nixon flew in and visited my high school when it was opened in the 70s. These are also popular with troops going overseas to Vietnam. There are a lot of examples online of pictures taken in Vietnam with a Kodak Instamatic, and there are a lot of first-hand stories of soldiers carrying a Kodak Instamatic when they were over in Vietnam. Moving on from the Instamatic 104, we have the Instamatic M18. This is a movie camera that would take Super 8 film, so another cartridge-based film type. You would load a plastic cartridge of Super 8 film into the film compartment in the middle. You would close the door, and you're ready to start shooting. This doesn't have a shutter speed, um, selector. It was set automatically at 18 frames a second. This was produced from 1967 to 1969 and I can't find very much information on the M18 but I can find a lot of information on the later Instamatic 8mm models. I said 8mm film but what I really mean is Super 8 film. Super 8 and 8mm film are two completely different things. Super 8 film came in a plastic cartridge that would just slot into your camera and you're ready to start shooting. Double 8, Standard 8, Regular 8, or just plain 8mm film would come on a reel and you would load that reel into your camera, thread it through the camera, and it was actually 16 millimeters wide. So you would run it through the camera once and expose half of the, half of the film, and then you would run it through the camera again and expose the other half of the film. Now, once you sent that off to get processed, they would develop it and then splice the film down the middle, separating the two halves of the film. They would splice those two halves together to make one long roll of 8mm film. Now, 8mm film that has been processed and Super 8 film are still different. You can't project 8mm film on a Super 8 projector and you can't project Super 8 film on an 8mm projector because the size of the frame and the size of the sprocket holes are slightly different. 
There are some projectors that can switch between 8mm and Super 8 film, but they should have a little selector switch. If you want to shoot with these cameras today, they still make Super 8 film. Kodak still makes Super 8 film, and that is available very abundantly, and you can still find processing for it very easily. 126 film, on the other hand, Kodak does not make anymore. I do believe that the Film Photography Project makes limited quantities of 126 film, but I'm not very sure. Another popular thing that people do to shoot on Instamatics is to convert 35mm film to 126 film. You can buy converters, you can 3D print converters, and you can look up some tutorials online on how to load regular 35mm film into an old 126 film cassette which you would then load into your camera and run through it and it would work like that. Analog Resurgence has a great video about 126 film. I would highly recommend that you watch it and there should be a card to that up on the top of the screen somewhere. I highly recommend that you subscribe to his channel. He's actually one of the people that inspired me to start making these camera videos. If you want to find one of these cameras today, they are very abundant and they're also very cheap. If you ask your parent or grandparent if they still have their Kodak Instamatic, chances are they still do, and people are practically giving these away. I actually received this one for free from my coworker Chris. Thanks, Chris. And I found this Instamatic at a thrift store. So they're very cheap, they're very easy to come by, and you should have no problem finding one of these cameras. I knew this video was gonna be a little bit shorter than they usually are, because I didn't even have to bring the camera close to show you how to use them, because they are just so simple to use. So I decided to double up and make a video on the two different cameras that I have that share the Instamatic name. If you have any more cameras that you would like to see me cover, leave it in the comments below, and that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.